Alrighty, so I was off to get my KSR like I said, so please check out my previous video so you know what it is the hell I'm doing. And keys in the ignition, hot and fresh out the kitchen. Got my New York City Marathon 2009. I ran the New York Marathon in 2009. Gakimoto's fun facts. So, like I said, just gonna show you this. KSR. And this is my garage. So let's take it to the Paranaque Speedway for part two of Garage Visits. Okay, what's happened to the Paranaque Speedway? <laughs> it looks very unsafe. <laughs> Because it's been raining here in the Philippines, I think for a month already. All the sand from the drains or whatever, they're all flowing into the Paranaque Speedway. Because I don't want to show anyone where I live. I skip out the part where I'm coming from my lovely home and my lovely garage. Please check out the previous episode showing part one of my garage. This is part two. Part one, I showed you my KTM Duke 200, and right now, I'm showing you my Kawasaki KSR 110. This Kawasaki KSR 110 was my first bike, so yeah, there's a special place in my heart for it. I purchased it in 2010. Before that, I mean, I didn't own my own motorcycle, but seriously, I've been riding two wheels since I was like three years old. Seriously, I learned how to bike in two wheels at the age of three. Oh, it looks so much bigger in photo than it actually is in real life. Because this bike here is a mini motard. Mini moto, mini, super mini moto. I mean, it, just, it falls under that classification of like a mini bike. This is why I gave it the lovely name Austin. Because it's an Austin mini motard. Basically on the website, it shows the top speed of this 110cc. It says you can hit up to 90. I beg to differ and I think um, on, a, on a downhill bridge, I will claim that I've taken it to 100. I wish you could see my gauge over here, but uh, this tubing is covering the spot. Oh, and don't mind my mirrors. When I take this to the max speed test, you will see my mirrors fold in. <laughs> I think they're made in China. But what isn't made in China nowadays? These are not stock parts. I bought them. They were really cheap and I thought they looked good when I first bought them. But now that I'm looking at it, it's like new. Let's give it a speed test. See how far we could go. Okay. Second gear. Third gear. Oh, some road kill. Okay, I'm fourth gear and I'm full throttle. Full down. I'm at 80. Come on, baby. Come on. 90. No, no, no. 85. Full throttle. 85. Approaching 90. Oh, but there's cars up ahead. Mother, no! Oh, like I said, see, my mirrors will start folding in. This is 80. Just honk the horn a bit. So no one goes in my way. But there you have it. 90. Okay. It hits 90 with great effort. And oh! There you go. Oh, let's fix these mirrors. Told you the mirrors would fold in. <laughs> ah! You know, it's such a good idea. It was such a good idea to make a super mini that was like roadworthy. You know, it fits road standards. Because previously they would make supermoto mini bikes, but you know, you couldn't take them out on the road because they were like toys. This was the first super mini motard that 
Kawasaki came out with. And then of course, you know, because it was such a brilliant idea, the other bands decided to follow. So I like to bring this one out on more chill days. So this is my chill bike, like chillax. I'm very happy with this bike. I will show you why. Let's take it to the Walking Dead set and I will show you why. Dead end. Do not enter. Beware. Terminus. <laughs> I'll give you a quick walk around of the bike and y'all can tell me what you think. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments section. Let's turn that off. Meet Austin, the super me. Yeah, I know. I'm not ready. I was busy making fun of my friend in the last episode for him not being ready to show his bike. Oh shit. Sorry. So this is my bike and yeah I know it's kind of dirty so like I said it's a 110 cc it's four stroke single cylinder four speed semi-automatic transmission that's what I like you won't see a clutch lever popping out because it's semi-automatic meaning I still have a gear shifter over here which goes all the way up it's just up four up one two three four so max power of 7.8 horsepower. Isn't it cute? It looks cute but mean. Seriously, this thing looks bigger than it actually really is. It has a seat height of 750 millimeters, which is way shorter than the KTM Duke. It has a dry weight of 85 kilograms, ground clearance of 225 millimeters. So that's a big difference from my KTM Duke, which is a 170 ground clearance. So you could take this thing off-road upside down fork and it's fitted currently fitted with slick tires these are not the original stock tires i've already changed these ones here to a 120 the stock tires came with a 100 200 millimeter disc brakes in the back 185 millimeter disc brake in front so let me do a walk around i am not gonna pass it back <laughs> because i don't want to show you my plate number and it's a bitch to edit these things this is it from the other side so not bad it's in traditional Kawasaki green, their mini super sport bike. These are the decals that were available in 2010 when I got it. The newer ones come with different lights. It's got the triangular looking lights. And in all honesty, I like the way this one looks. I don't know, it looks more old school with a squarish light. And I think it has a more lasting design than if I got the newer ones so they've the newer ones i think there's a ksr pro which comes with manual transmission so it's not the semi-automatic which is cool also but might make things not as much fun as it is right now i mean i have to tell you i have a lot of fun riding this bike and what have i changed since 2010 the first thing i changed i changed the mirrors it had round mirrors which i didn't think you know went with the whole feel of everything so i got these cheap ass mirrors <laughs> and then i got these rear foot pegs here because i actually think that you know, really will make ankas somebody <laughs> ankas in english means to back ride so i got these really cute foot pegs which i didn't get in the philippines um i bought them in malaysia parts for this bike I think the engine parts are quite easy to find. This is a Kawasaki Fury engine. The Fury parts are ready, readily available. But for accessories, like if you want to get a seat or like I wanted to get these foot pegs, I had to get them in Malaysia or Thailand. It's not a very common bike for the Philippines. And of course, I've changed tires already because um, I've worn them out pretty much. So I put these Delhi tires over here, 120. There you can see what it is, Indonesian made tires in the rear and in the front. The stock tires are 100, 100 millimeter tires. Changed oil of course, you have to change your oil, the, the usual maintenance. And I have changed the exhaust, yeah. The original exhaust fit on the inside as well, so I wanted to get something that was on the inside. I had to have it 
custom done either they had to fit it so that it went on the inside here it's looking pretty good now this is what it looks like from the rear uh, let me start it up so that you can hear what the new pipe sounds like it's pretty noisy when i got this bike the stock pipe you couldn't hear anything like you wouldn't even know it was on so it's a kickstart pedal there you go and this is what it sounds like now here i got it an exhaust pipe these are thick they're made in the philippines so you can check out their website on facebook and this is what it sounds like that's what it sounds like currently but this thing is already fitted with a silencer see i have a silencer over here it's not very noisy and I think it still sounds whole, you know? Not very annoying. It's just slightly louder than the initial one, which sounded pretty much like an electric bike. <laughs> I have no problem with things sounding quiet. It's just that, you know, I think people don't hear you passing, so safety issues. I think it was better that I put a, an exhaust that's a little bit louder. As you can see here, I've already done 8,324 kilometers. Not bad. And again, what have I done? I've changed oil. <laughs> I've changed oil. Oh, and yeah, I've also replaced my, uh, my light bulb over here. Changed light bulb. Nothing much. It's a 7.3 liter tank. And then again, upside down fork. And similar to my KTM Duke, it's a naked bike. Something about naked bikes that I like. <laughs> it doesn't have a fuel gauge, but I have a fuel reserve. See here, it's on. And then if you want to switch to reserve, there, you just switch it up to reserve. So currently, it's on on. So if you want to check if there's fuel, you really just have to open it and like ooh, there you go you see my fuel only patron blaze that i put in there it's very basic the newer models uh, come with a different gauge but i think still analog you'll have to check the website this is the old one and i like the way it looks very classic you know this round style but it's very well done so all it is is really just a speedometer reading that's it you have a speedometer reading and then you have the one for the signal lights uh, just a signal light to note if your signal lights on and then the neutral light so if it has a gear light but it's so basic it's only if it's on neutral it does not tell you what gear you're on that's one thing i don't like about it is you don't know which gear you're on so you pretty much have to gauge which one you're on by like you know how from the earth, from the speedometer and everything as you know it's very basic i have the usual high beam low beam high beam and leveled beam even the signal lights there you'll see it blinking signal lights but it's not retractable you have to like put it back manually there and then you've got a horn which is okay sounds small <laughs> just exactly like the bike is small you have a throttle a choke you have a choke lever here kill switch on and off so this is basically my kawasaki ksr